Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you are the creator and giver of all good things. It is under your sovereign power that all flags of all nations wave. And we pray that we might remember that tonight as we pledge our allegiances to a particular flag, that we are under that sovereign direction and guidance, that we are intensely aware of who is in charge of the flow of history. But we gather together here, humanly intending to do good work. We seek to represent fairly and well those who have given us this task. May we, may we exercise that faithfully. May our efforts be blessed with insight, uh, guide us by a careful understanding and wisdom Help us be present to all that is being presented here and not just to some. May we seek to serve with respect for all who are here tonight. And may the faith that we bring to this meeting and this effort give us strength to act honestly and well in all the matters before us. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, Reverend, for being here tonight and for offering the prayers. Also, before we get started, I do want to um, recognize um, two elected officials and one former elected official, uh, Mr. Joe Vaught, former commissioner at large, District 1. Is that right? No, District 5. My, sorry about that. I'm the former at large District 1. You're <laughs> District 5. Um, also, uh, J.D. Rios on the Community College Board, welcome, and Chuck Stites on the Edwardsville City Council, welcome. All right, with that, I'll ask the clerk if there are any revisions to tonight's agenda. Yes, Mr. Mayor, a blue sheet has been distributed. Under the commissioner's agenda, we have one item. It's a new item, number one. It's a resolution for climate change. Thank you. I'll now ask the clerk to read our proclamation under the mayor's agenda. The proclamation reads, whereas... Okay, the excuse me. Before we ask the clerk to read the proclamation, I'd like to recognize Mr. Bach. Thank you, Mayor. Actually, and it, and it might work well, we've done a little bit of tonight's uh, proclamation that the mayor has been gracious enough to put together is regarding... Uh, it's the 100th anniversary for professional management in the state of Kansas. So we put together a little bit of history and there's some points from the proclamation in there and that might just suffice as well as having the clerk read the whole thing into the record. So okay. with that, I'd like to recognize Assistant County Administrator Melissa Munt, who's going to uh, review this information. All right, thank you, um, Doug. So on February 1917, Governor Arthur Capper signed into legislation authorizing the adoption of the city management form of government by Kansas cities. In March of that same year, the cities of Wichita and El Dorado voted to adopt the city manager form of government and respectively installed their first city managers on June 18th and June 1st of 1917. Today, 170 cities and 32 counties are served by professional manager administrators. These governments represent 90% of the state's population. The Kansas Association of City and County Managers, KACM, represents 192 administrators serving in Kansas cities and counties. In, nine, in Kansas, we have a strong history of higher education opportunities for city management. The School of Public Affairs at the University of Kansas, the Hugo Wall School of Public Affairs at Wichita State University and the Masters of Public Administration program at Kansas State all prepare graduate students to work as professional city managers, city administrators, county managers, and county administrators. Now I'd like to read from the proclamation, um, and I really appreciate, as do Joe Gordon and myself and our new administrative intern, Logan, um, the proclamation that's been prepared by the mayor's office for this evening. Whereas, 
the year 2017 is the 100th anniversary of city management in Kansas, and whereas the city of Kansas City, Kansas adopted the city administrator form of government in 1983, and whereas Wyandotte County adopted the county administrator form of government in 1990, and whereas the unified government established the county administrator form of government with its formation in 1997, and whereas today the city or county manager form of government has been adopted by voters in 73 Kansas cities and two counties and serves 24% of the state's municipal population now, I, okay, therefore I, Mayor Mark Holland, it's a little awkward for me, CEO, the Unified Government of Kansas City, Kansas, Wyandotte County, hereby do proclaim June 18th, 2017 as the 100th anniversary of City Management Day in Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. All right, and let's come down, I'll come down front, we'll take a picture. Yes. I just would note also, Mayor, that uh, this is in coordination. You know, it's the state of Kansas, the governor, um, also the, uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives also recognized us um, and declaring June 18th as uh, Manager's Day in the state of Kansas. So That's great. Thank you very much. I trust that picture will make the Christmas card for the unified government. But I think we have an outstanding professional staff and an outstanding organization altogether with 2,200 staff members and the outstanding leadership we have in our, um, our administrator's office um, is the beginning of many good things. So thank you for your leadership and for your team. Um, very proud of the work that's being done um, right now in Kansas City, Kansas and Wyandotte County on behalf of the unified government. So thank you. And because it's City Manager's Day, um, we're going to ha punctuate our meeting at the end with Mr. Bach's report, quarterly report. <laughs> uh, so we want everyone to get the full experience of Administrator's Day today. Um, I'm sure everyone here for the public hearings will stay late for that. That's right. In fact, we're going to require it tonight. Everyone must stay through the entire meeting. Not really. Okay. Um, also, another introduction, we want to welcome Representative Tom Burroughs here. Um, fresh in from the legislature, thank you for being in attendance tonight. All right, that brings us now to our consent agenda. I will, uh, does any member of the commission, staff, or citizen in attendance tonight wish to set aside any item on the consent agenda? Any item that is not set aside will be voted on by a single vote. Move to approve as submitted. Second. It is, uh, let the record show, no one is moving to forward to remove an item. Um, it is properly before us. Roll call. Roll call. McKiernan? Aye. Mugia? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Kane? Aye. Markley? Aye. Walters? Aye. Phil, um, Bynum? Aye. Walker? Aye. Townsend? Aye. The vote is 9-0. to zero. That motion carries. I will draw attention of the public to that item that was just approved, um, Amazon Transit Service. As Amazon sets to open on July 30th with 1,500 new employees, um, we've been holding um, job fairs with Am in conjunction with Amazon, and we've already had um, nearly 1,000 people come through the job fairs, and over 700 Wyandotte County residents have already applied for the jobs at Amazon. So we are doing excellent work to get Wyandotte County citizens in line for these great jobs at Amazon, and we have adapted our bus service to make sure that transportation is not a barrier for people looking for this employment. So it's big news, and it's, I hate to see something that big pass on the consent agenda, though I didn't dare pull it off because crazy things happen when things come off the consent agenda. Okay, public hearing agenda. The first public hearing is a project for the Northwest Speedway Bo Star Bond District. 
an Associated American Royal project. Mr. Bach, do you want to open this? Thank you, Mayor. Um, and as you said, this first pro the first uh, public hearing we have tonight is in regard to the proposed American Royal project. Um, we've had this before you in the sense that a district was established. Uh, tonight we are looking for the action for the for uh, a public hearing on the plan. Um, John Stevens, our Director of Economic Development, is here this evening, and he is going to give a presentation uh, regarding the project as it's laid out. After that time, we will re recommend to open it up for the public hearing and hear from the public. We are not looking for action on this item tonight. We're here this evening to have the public hearing to understand where it's at, as we've advertised, gone through that process, and then move from there. Great. Mr. Stevens. Thank you. Uh, as County Administrator Bach said, uh, I'm John Stevens, Director of Economic Development, uh, and I want to run through um, the uh, presentation, but first I also want to recognize uh, we have representatives from the American Royal in attendance. Lynn Parman, John Mitchell, and Cord Maxwell are here uh, representing the American Royal. The, as the, commission, or as the uh, administrator said, the issue before you tonight is to hold a public hearing regarding the proposed project plan for the Northwest Speedway Starbond District and the associated American Royal project. Commission on this is to be considered at a future date. So the Speedway Starbond District, as you see here, is encompassed um, on the area north of Parallel, east of 110th, between State Avenue and Parallel, west of 110th, just to west of 118th Street. To provide a little more detail, how this is arranged is the southern portion of, of the district along parallel is state and local pledged. The north portion, the northeast portion, is state only. The current funding source uh, summary for the American Wall Project includes, as you can see here, 80 million in net star bond proceeds, 80 million of private contribution from the developer, and the 5.3 million of other sources are non-UG sources. Those will be, uh, th those are projected to be derived from the American Royal and their, their uh, resources. <coughs> the uses, as you can see, are 4 million for an land acquisition, uh, 21 million in private site work, 18, almost 19 million in public infrastructure, 91 million in vertical construction, the buildings and facilities, uh, and then the remainder of the cost uh, equals out the 165 number. So a little bit further detail, uh, here is a, a, an outline of the site plan, as you can see, along 118th Street with the primary cluster being at the uh, southeast corner of 118th and Delaware Parkway. And if there are no further questions at this point, I would request that uh, a representative from the American Royal come up to make a few remarks. Yes, that'd be fine, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Commission, Corp Maxwell at the Polsonelli Firm appearing today on behalf of our client, the American Royal. As John said, I also have with me Lynn Parman, the President and the CEO of the American Royal, and then John Mitchell, who is a local uh, businessman and CEO in our community who serves as the volunteer chair of the building committee for the American Royal. As many know, we've been uh, on this mission for many, many years. Uh, and what we bring before you, we believe, is a true public-private partnership, a partnership between the unified government, the state of Kansas, and uh, many charitable local business owners that are willing to make significant contributions, charitable contributions, to make a reality moving the American Royal across state line, bringing them into Wyandotte County in the state of Kansas, and beginning to have an anchor and a base for agriculture in Kansas and a big, big front door that says Kansas is open for business when it comes to agriculture. Uh, I think John did an excellent job of giving uh, the details or the high summer, summary level details of what you find in our project plan. Uh, I know that we have a long agenda tonight, Mayor and members of the Commission. I, of course, would be happy to answer any specific questions that any of the commissioners had. If none, I'll be happy to sit down and uh, allow you to move forward. What I might do is open it up to the public hearing and um, see if there are any questions generated from the public and then take questions from the commission. All right, we'll now open the public hearing. Um, just to reiterate, we're not taking action on this plan tonight. We are simply holding the public hearing to get public input on the American Royal uh, plan that's coming. Um, if anyone would like to step forward um, in favor of this project, we'd ask you to step forward at this time. Let the record show no one stepping forward. If anyone would like to step forward in opposition to this uh, proposal, would you step forward at this time? Again, the record shows no one stepping forward. Um, I'll now close the public hearing 
And if there are any questions from the commission, I will um, open it up to the commission at this time. Your presentation was clearly complete and riveting, and we thank you for that. Um, an exciting project. Um, we're very excited about the American Royal. Um, very excited about the prospect of that. Um, would love to host it. The historic institution is a great asset to the entire metro area. Very much want to keep it in the metro. And very much honored to be the, um, the site that's going to see it continue to grow and flourish in its um, next iteration. So thank you for the opportunity here in Wyandotte County. And thank you for the work that you've done to bring this plan forward. All right. That concludes that item. Again, we're not taking action, so there will not be a vote. Um, but we will move to the next item, um, which is the public hearing considering the Village East amended Star Bond District Plan and proposed project areas 2B and 3. Mr. Bach. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and, and as you noted, this is another project where we've had the district before us. The district has been approved for some years. Um, a couple of years ago, we came back and we kind of broke it into different project areas. Uh, we proceeded forward with one of those plan areas, and that's where development is happening out, out there today. Actually, two different areas that were worked around there. Um, tonight is to talk about the plan areas 2B and 3, which their potential for how they will develop out in the future. And with that, I will recognize John Stevens again. John. Again, John Stevens, Economic Development. Uh, have another uh, brief presentation here that we can expand on if we need to. Uh, so the issue before you is the public hearing regarding the proposed second amendment to the amended and restated Star Bond District Plan and proposed Star Bond project plans for project areas 2B and 3 of the Village East Star Bond District. That's a tongue twister, but it's pretty, uh, pretty simple out here. You, you see 435 and uh, Village East Schlitterbahn area to on the right side. The gold area is project area 2. Project area 2B is the southern portion. Project area 3 is the green area. So on May 11th, the commission unanimously adopted the resolution setting the public hearing date for this. So the previous actions are shown here related to this district, uh, if there are any questions related to that. And other than that, um, the, uh, what we're here for tonight is the public hearing on those three issues. And then once again, I would reiterate, this would be um, one that we would recommend commission action would be considered at a future date. And if there are no questions for me at this point, I would ask a representative of the developer, Richard Knapper from EPR, to come up and make some remarks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Holland, commissioners, County Administrator Bach, and UG staff. Thank you for the time this evening. A few brief comments, then certainly would be open for questions if there are any. This one. About four years ago, we stood before you uh, with a business plan and a model to jumpstart development on this project that had been long stalled. And with the assistance of this governing body, people at the state level in the Commerce Department, as well as a team that we assembled from SVV1 LLC, as well as EPR, including Kurt Peterson and Chuck Stites. I think since this time, the time this aerial shot was taken in 2014, there are some pretty dramatic things that have happened at this project. I'm gonna fast forward to a aerial uh, of the project as of May of 17. And I do have a pointer starting at the top um, when we embarked on the development of this project in a way to create sales tax property tax and employment at this project and looking for stuff that would be a catalyst for other development not only at our project but in Wyandotte County and for that matter in the state of Kansas we came across several very large prominent users that bring a lot of people to the site and create a lot of uh, economic, economic activity at the project. Starting at the top, we have the latest prototype of a Nissan automotive store in the country. And that is Fenton Nissan out of Texas. They also purchased the lot right next to it for a future automobile dealership. 
We have brought these users from Texas. They're deploying tens of millions of dollars in property building and inventory into the state of Kansas and Wyandotte County. Directly to the south, Victory Ford and Chrysler, again, an out-of-state company that has come into Kansas, into Wyandotte County, and is deploying tens of millions of dollars in property building and inventory. And their sales have far exceeded the estimates that we had back with our star bond issuance several years ago. Additionally, across the street from Chrysler and Ford is Victory's pre-owned car superstore, which is under construction at present. Up on the hard corner is a Phillips 66 and convenience store. Directly south of that is Speedway Wash, which also has a restaurant inside of it in its own separate uh, drive through window. Moving to uh, the south further, we're all aware of Dairy Farmers World Headquarters that was splashed all across the Business Journal last Friday. What a complex that has been. Uh, not only the building, but all the employment they have. We recently sold to the east of Dairy Farmers this lot here to HCA, a large medical REIT out of Nashville. That is an approximate 40,000 square foot medical office building that is currently under construction. Completion scheduled for 12 to 15 months from today. Everyone is also aware of U.S. Soccer's National Training Facility that we facilitated a long-term ground lease for them to build that phenomenal project uh, on our property there and here in the state of Kansas and Wyandotte County. Uh, what's coming out of the ground now is awfully impressive with what they've done there. As part of the overall project also, and it's not on this area, is the youth fields to the east of 94th Street. So as I stated, we are, these are more aerials looking for the site plan. It's not up there. Not there? No, it's not. Okay. So I'm going to go back. That's as good as anything. So as I said, we started a business plan back in 2014, 2013 on how to jumpstart this development. And thus far, we have everything you've seen under construction there. We are progressing under the original business plan that we set forth years ago to develop the rest of the retail at this project. And we have a second uh, district area, Project 2B, which is these lots down here, uh, as well as lots adjacent to U.S. soccer. At present, for those lots, uh, Frontier Justice, which has been through full planning and through your approval, and they're under construction as well. Uh, next to Frontier Justice in the planning stages and documents trading right now would be Kansas City's only uh, Jeep terrain course. This would be sponsored by Chrysler, sponsored by Jeep. It would bring people in from all across the Midwest for outdoor uh, activities as well as Jeep terrain driving. And they would also be able to take other vehicles in the auto mall through the terrain course. I view this by itself as an attraction. And having someone have the opportunity to come and drive their car on that type of a course before they buy it, that's going to bring a lot of people to the site. So that one also was going for the next bond offering. Next to U.S. Soccer, we are in conversations for a hotel that would back up to U.S. Soccer. We have two lots that back up to U.S. Soccer that a developer is putting under contract for neighborhood retail that would be complementary to every other use we have out here, as well as a great use next to the hotel and next to U.S. Soccer. And on the hard corner under construction right now is Freddy's, uh, fast food, burgers, custard. Uh, honestly, it's my favorite restaurant in metropolitan Kansas City. They are someone that I, honestly, I approached in 2013-14 and asked them to come here, and I told them our vision, and I told them what we were going to do, and they said, thanks for shopping. We have no interest whatsoever. I called them back in 2015, right after our bond offering, and said, have you seen what we've done lately? Any idea what we're doing? And they had not. They came to town, and we can see what happened since then. They've purchased a lot, and they're under construction. So my point of the Freddy story is, there are a lot of users out there that in the prior years, we could not attract to this site, but we are today. And it has been a lot of grinding and hard work, and we have sold on the success of Wyandotte County, both west of 435, east of 435, and on the overall vision and success of this project. And in addition to the users I pointed out that are coming up in this area, 
we have a host of users south of dairy farmers, from dairy farmers all the way down to State Avenue. And it is approximately 375,000 square feet of primarily national credit anchor tenants that these tenants are being sought after by every community in Kansas City in every competing city to the Kansas City metropolitan area. We have worked diligently and tirelessly to attract them to this project. The largest of the group, which would sit in this area, is 200,000 square feet. There are not many 200,000 square feet retail tenants that are financially solvent in the country any longer. And these guys are golden. They're under contract. In fact, they met with Rob Richardson, I believe it was last week, to start the planning process. South of them, in this area here, we have letters of intent and negotiations ongoing with a host of other national retailers that I will be bringing forth to you in the coming weeks, in coming months, that would like to start construction as soon as possible. This user's goal, as he stated to Mr. Richardson, was to be under construction by December of this year. Fast, I will admit, but as we all know, time kills all deals. And when we have that type of a retailer wanting to get going, we're going to do everything we can on our side to get them in as soon as possible. And then the two red brick buildings on state south of 98, I think it's somewhat public knowledge now that uh, the diners, dives, and drive-ins, celebrity uh, grinders, uh, stretch from grinders, who is friends with Guy Fieri on the Food Network, has put forth a plan to put his next grinders location with a live music venue in those buildings. So with that, uh, I'm very quickly working myself out of a job on developing this project, but is with great success and great pride that we've been doing this. And with what we put forth here, the project would be complete in a much faster uh, time frame than we set forth when our original plan was uh, approved back in 13, 14. And so that is a little bit of an update as to where we are and uh, what we'll be bringing forth to you in the coming weeks and coming months. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna open up the public hearing at this point. Again, there will not be action on this plan tonight. Um, we were bringing this updated plan to the public. If there is anyone who would like to speak in favor of this plan, I'd invite you to come to the microphone at this time. Let the record show no one moving to a microphone. If someone would like, sir, would you like to come up? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jonas Cruz, and I live in Wayne County for about 25 years. And every day present over here, it look beautiful, it look nice. They're gonna have create a lot of jobs, and they're gonna be a potential business in there. I agree with the project, but why you leave the rest of the, the, the like for example, Argentine and Quindero, they need a lot of something to do down for them because there's a lot of people living property. They don't have no, a lot of people, just a lot of crime over there. And you just put it, everything over there in legend, and you leave the poor people here that been here many, many years in here, and then nothing, I hear nothing for the Argentine, our model, and there's still a lot of people that are really poor. Everything is okay, I agree with that, but why don't at least thinking in the rest of it. Because Wanda County is only one, White County is a big one, big county, but they have a lot of districts. Why they forgot all the rest of the districts? We are people too, we pay taxes. And I agree with that, but I think sometimes you, no matter you're Republican or Democrat, they need to start together and start thinking to the rest of the district, not just take it all over there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anyone uh, in attendance tonight like to speak in opposition to the proposal? Let the record show no one speaking in opposition. I will close the public hearing. Um, any comments or questions from the commission? Again, another outstanding presentation. Um, thank you very much for your hard work on this. This has been a long time coming. Um, and we appreciate your, um, your work to fully develop this site um, and really have some destination opportunities for the community. Thank you. All right. The next item, the third item, is a public hearing on the Argentine fast food shops. Um, and I will turn this over to Mr. Bach as well.
Thank you, Mayor. Commission, um, tonight. Do you want to recuse first? Um, well, I'm going to let Commissioner McGee first speak. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'm the commissioner for this district, but I am also the executive director of ONDA that is contributing a $1.2 million grant to this project. So as a result, I'll be recusing myself from voting and discussion on this. Thank you. Mr. Bach. Thank you. Um, this is a public hearing as well for this project area. Um, a little bit different, though, in the sense that this is a district which in going through the TIF, which a star district is similar, similar to a TIF district, um, this is one of those, and I'm probably stealing part of John's presentation, but you know, he just has to go along with what I throw out there and then <laughs> clean it up afterward. Um, is to come in, a district is the first stage of it. We have the district and we have a plan that's approved down there where we have the save a lot and the Walmart stores. <laughs> However, this is a modification to the original district plan and that's what we're presenting tonight We'll have the public hearing on it, but we are looking for action on this um, after the public hearing tonight. So with that, I'll turn this over to Mr. Stevens. Once again, John Stevens, Economic Development. Good evening. Uh, as the administrator said, the issue before you tonight is to consider amending the existing Metropolitan Avenue TIF district to expand the boundaries to include Project Area 3. That is the issue before you tonight. Project Area 3 is proposed to include and there's the project area. It's proposed to include uh, three quick serve restaurant facilities in two buildings. So this is the project area site. Uh, as you can see, the star is the property just south of Metropolitan Avenue, just west of 18th Street Expressway. It is adjoining the larger project area, which to the west is the Walmart neighborhood market, the Save a Lot, and the Dollar General. I also uh, think it's worth pointing out that in the center there is the South Patrol. So that is an important component uh, of the area. Uh, this is the proposed site again. And this is the site plan and the facilities that are being proposed on the property that we are seeking a public hearing for expansion of the TIFF district for. At this point, uh, I would invite any representative from the developer to come up if they would like to uh, discuss the project a little bit. Otherwise, if the commission wishes, I will go through the uh, details of the project as well. Thank you, John. Corp Maxwell, Pulsinelli Firm, appearing tonight on behalf of Argentine Betterment Corporation. Three for three, three public hearings and three Pulsinelli attorneys. So that's the way we like to have it and keep it around here. Thank you very much three for, for that. Three for three or O oh for three. It depends <laughs> on how you count. Is that right? <laughs> uh, that being said, I, again, I know you have a, uh, a long agenda uh, in, in many items and, and frankly, uh, this project and the work we've been doing in Argentine has been in front of this commission innumerable times. So I'll uh, I'll leave it to uh, to John to go through. But we are very excited uh, to bring forward three high quality, uh, quick service retail restaurants to do uh, urban development east of 635. Uh, as everybody on this commission knows, urban development is hard. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of investment, and that's what this project will take. But we're committed to it, we're going to work on it, and we're going to get it done, and we just appreciate the consideration of this commission. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Corb. So with that, I will take you through the, uh, the project details. Uh, the proposal de details are as follows. The total project cost is $3.3 million. That includes the site acquisition fee, uh, including the UG owned parcel and the KDOT right of way uh, that was donated. The uh, site work, the building shell, and the associated soft costs associated with the project. And there we go. So factors to consider are obviously the fact the spring 2014 opening of the Walmart neighborhood uh, market and the Save-A-Lot grocery store and the performance of those. So here is, as we stated before in my opening, the uh, redevelopment district with the Save-A-Lot highlighted. And uh, the existing TIF district includes uh, uh, the following issues. Geo bonds and the sales tax performance as they have come online are as follows. You can see this. Um, this is the issued uh, geo bond debt and the property tax TIF for the Save-A-Lot as well as for project area two, which is the uh, Walmart. And here is uh, the latest summary of the uh, sales tax area, sales tax performance. So you can see it is performing in project areas one and two 
through 14, 15, 16. Uh, here is the project area one revenue performance as well as uh, net projections. Revenue performance in area two as well as the net projections. And the project's requested incentives, which as I mentioned, we're not considering in this public hearing tonight, but to summarize is the CID 1% sales tax add-on. Uh, the performer suggests that that's 570,000 in gross CID revenue over 22 year term. The TIF district, which is the property tax and sales tax, it's a pay as you go. Uh, so no bond issuance, no geo backing. The performance suggests 1.1 for gross property tax TIF revenue over the 20 year term and 995,000 uh, for gross sales tax TIF revenue over 20 year term. The federal grants, uh, as the commissioner mentioned before she uh, recused herself, is a 1.23, approximately million dollar uh, grant commitment from the federal government uh, awarded to ANDA and contributed to this project. And then finally is the economic development upfront cash contribution uh, that is part of the um, uh, part of what the commission approved uh, for this project as it relates to a upfront cash contribution that then would be paid back in full at the conclusion of the project. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, this is a direction to proceed with the TIF proposal and to adopt the ordinance related to expanding the boundaries of this TIF district to include the project area for the, uh, the three quick serve restaurants in two facility buildings. And with that, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, again, I will hold questions until after the public hearing, um, but I will open up the public hearing at this time. If anyone um, would like to speak in favor of this um, project, if you would please step forward to the microphone at this time. My name is Mario Escobar, and I live at 1438 South 25th Street. Uh, I'm a resident there in Argentina and also currently uh, president of Vanna Vila Argentine Neighborhood Association. Uh, we uh, held several neighborhood group meetings. Oh, first of all, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, we've held uh, neighborhood group meetings uh, and uh, we, you know, showed proposals of, of uh, this project. And overall, uh, we had a positive uh, uh, input from most most of the folks in the neighborhood or so and um, uh, you know we we support this project uh, we think it'll be a, a big economic boost to our uh, our neighborhood area uh, as you see that uh, uh, Walmart can save a lot is doing fairly well there and I think that's what uh, encourages these fast food uh, places to uh, to come you know to come in our neighborhood and and most of all it's going to create jobs uh, for our neighborhood and, and and that's what we need so uh, we support uh, uh, this proposal thank you thank you hi my name is Micah King I'm executive director of ABC um, Mario is my predecessor uh, he's teaching me a lot um, but uh, one thing I've noticed with this project um, in talking kind of like Mario said with the community groups um, they're very excited uh, about the potential of bringing fast food to the area, very excited about the project, um, as well as I am. Uh, I don't live in the area, I live a few miles away, and we have the benefit of having food um, within a, a few, you know, walking distance even. Um, and working with a lot of elderly people, um, or people that don't drive and take buses all the time, they don't have access to the food um, like I have or like my neighbors have. And so I think this is gonna be a big asset for people. Um, I remember trying to order pizza for a few of my elderly friends and they don't drive and I could pick it up for them but they're like no we want to learn how to do it ourselves so we can do it um, and that's just one example and then I call places and they're like sorry we don't deliver to that area so this will give people access to food um, that normally wouldn't get it um, you know quickly um, so we are uh, I'm a very big supporter of this and excited uh, of the potential of this and bringing new jobs into the community um, my uncle has owned a business in Argentine for years um, and he's hired a lot of people and just just seeing these people their worth it work ethic how they work um, I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to, to get more jobs in the area. So we're really excited about it. Thank you Thank you Would anyone else like to speak in favor Seeing no one else moving to the microphone would anyone like to speak in opposition to this proposal?
Hello, my name is Glory Martinez, and I live in Ar the Argentine area. I have strong reservations about these fast food uh, restaurants coming into our area, not only because of the location where they're at, right around the corner from a middle school, with buses, kids, uh, and that area right there is all congested. They, it surrounds three, within a two block area, three four-way stops. And if you've ever passed through there, it's anyone, everyone's for themselves, you know. Anybody can go whenever they want. They stop, sometimes they don't. You have pedestrians cross, crossing the streets, no safe crosswalks. Um, and I just don't see that uh, this would be beneficial for our area. We in Argentine from 21st through 42nd Street already have 26 uh, unoccupied buildings, either for sale, for lease, foreclosed, for rent, unoccupied. Why do we need a new development, especially in that area? Um, and you're bringing these minimum wage jobs for people. You can't even, uh, Walmart, the Save-A-Lot they talk about, the Dollar General, have, are always struggling to find uh, workers. How are you going to sustain workers in these new uh, fast food restaurants for minimum wage jobs? I just don't see it. I, I strongly urge you to consider putting new buildings and find no workers. We already have a Pizza Hut over a mile and a half away that deliver in our area. We have a McDonald's. We even have a Papa John's that deliver in our area. Why do we need another restaurant to go there that's really not beneficial to our area, to our people? We're already the, the uh, we rank, what, 101 out of 102 in the state of Kansas for unhealthy people? You have one minute, ma'am. Uh, and also these fast food jobs are below pay for livable wages in Wyandotte County. And our area is, we're just perpetuating the cycle. You know, we're never gonna get out of minimum wage jobs. Don't we deserve more in Argentine? Why don't we bring some of these jobs that are headed to the Village West? We deserve better. And I hope the, that you will consider this. Because although it is new and uh, new buildings, new places to go, it's not, I don't think you can sustain it in the area that they're looking to, to build these places. So I would hope that you guys would consider, uh, uh, really consider not putting these restaurants in our area. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition? I don't want to be in opposition. I know in opposition, Sir? I agree with this. You want to speak in opposition? No, I just want to agree. I disagree with this say because she said it's going to be a problem. Sir, sir, she has a right to say it. I we don't have rebuttal. We don't have rebuttal. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. I, I agree with that. Need to be there and there. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition? Let the record show no one else moving to the microphone. I'll now close the public hearing and I'll open it up to the commissioners if the commissioners have any questions or comments. Commissioner Markley. Mayor, I was just going to ask if you would um, ask those that are for or opposed in the audience to stand because I think yes, that's this a good is our idea. last item on the agenda, so I'm guessing some of these folks <laughs> are probably here. Yes, thank here, you. But we speak. often do that. We do ask if we'll ask everyone on either side to stand so that we can see the show of support, even if you chose not to speak. If you would like to stand in support of this project, would you please stand at this time? Thank you. If you would like to stand in opposition so we can see who is here in opposition, please stand. Thank you. No, ma'am, I'm sorry. We've closed the public hearing. Thank you very much. Um, and Commissioner Markley, thank you for reminding me. Um, do you have a comment other than that? All right. It is moved and seconded for approval. Commissioner McKiernan. I just have one question, and, and maybe Mr. Maxwell or Mr. Stevens can answer this for me. So I happen to notice on one of the slides, it was an old promotional uh, slick for La Plaza, Argentine, and it, it shows the area that it currently is on the northeast corner of 24th and Metropolitan, it says. And the fourth bullet point says, um, great for banks, fast food, and automotive. And so that, I guess, would be project area number one you know, that area, and now we're extending 
the TIF district over to this new area. Just remind me again why it's necessary or beneficial to expand the TIF district beyond this original area, which was promoted as being good for infill. Uh, Commissioner, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer that, or I would maybe defer to the Either developer's one. representative to make a statement. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, it's a great question, and it's one that, uh, frankly, we've struggled with in a lot of ways. And I think it comes down to, at the end of the day, as much as we want to, and when I say we, both the unified government or us that represent the development community, we want to tell people where to go. We want to say, hey, this is perfect. You need to go here. Um, the ultimate answer is that these tenants decide their own destiny, and they decide where they will go. And the grander story behind this is, why are we involved in this? Why does this take this commission action? Is we're building new buildings to bring these retailers here. But all of these retailers are paying approximately half of the rent that they would pay in other areas of this county or the county to the south or the Kansas City metro area. And because of that, that is why we have to go through this TIF and CID process and all of these other things. And we could be angry about that and we could be mad about that. And we could say, no, we want you to go somewhere else. But the answer is they just won't go that somewhere else. They won't come at all. We have had to work our tails off to get them to come at all. And the site that they selected are the sites for this UG owned ground and the, uh, the former KDOT right of way is where they selected. We would love to have them at uh, the pad site next to the Save-A-Lot location, the pad sites that are around the Walmart. Uh, but in general, I believe all of those developers for all of those projects that I have talked with are supportive of this effort and know that activity begets activity. And if we can fill up these right-of-way locations and show good, strong sales from that, we hope to fill in those other pad sites as we move through this and generate additional economic benefit for the unified government and the Argentine community. Excellent. Thank you. Could you clarify one thing you said for me? Yes. And I want to make sure that I understood it correctly. You said that the, the new businesses coming in will pay rent that is less than they would pay in other areas? That's absolutely correct. And they pay that lesser rent because? Um, because of the urban infill location. Okay, so I guess the implication there is it's a less desirable area overall compared to other areas, and so to attract them to come, then a, a lesser rent is the attractor that brings them in. Correct, Commissioner. Perfect. Thank you. Can we go back to the slide that shows the cost, um, income, and uses? This, this is it right here. Yep. Um, my understanding is the site, the site work is $970,000. That if it were on the current pad sites that are already built, that that nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars might not be there. Is that right? It would be less. It'd be less. Do you know how much less? I don't have an exact number, Commissioner, but it would be it would be substantially less. Um, Mayor, I sorry. That's all right. I also understand that um, if it were on the original site, it would reduce the cost, I believe, by more than five hundred thousand dollars. And we wouldn't need any public money. We wouldn't need any of that $500,000 in it were we to put it on the current site. It would need less than the current request, that's for sure. Um, it would not vitiate the need for the TIF that we're here on tonight. Okay. All right. Um, we have a motion and a second before us. Um, Commissioner Johnson. Just had a question as I was looking through. Can you use your microphone, please, sir? Absolutely. I'm usually not a, accused of not using a microphone. Um, there's a slide that has, it says that there is, with the $500,000 in upfront cash contribution from the UG, that there's, uh, we would recover in year 12, but I see another one that says the pro forma suggests payback in year 12 and recovery of UG, 500 upfront cash contribution in year 16. So I'm just curious, is it year 12 or is it year 16? And are there other terms to that particular uh, piece there? So, Commissioner, all of these are based on projections. I'm, I'm not sure if this was the slide or if it's further on in the- in It's the, in my uh, proposal in, in, in my packet here. Yeah. Is this it? 
Um, all of these are based on projections, and the point of what we're doing, since there will be no bond issued in this scenario, it will instead be a pay-as-you-go format, meaning the revenue streams will be granted to the developer, but the UG will not provide any credit support behind it, is we will go and then through a first mortgage loan with a private bank, be able to securitize that money, right? Be able to grab that money and, and, and gross it up so that we can go and do the construction. And the agreement that I believe will be drafted into the development agreement is that as soon as that first loan is paid off and we, because we, we have to for them to give us that loan, then all of that money will flow back and be to the unified government and available to pay off the $500,000. So I don't have it in front of me of what the exact year that will be, whether it's year 12 or year 16, uh, but if everything performs as it should, uh, it will be well in front of the full term of the TIF, and the unified government will have that money paid back. Very well. Commissioner, that, that term is, we are, we're projecting through our analysis that we would receive what we are fronting now at the $500,000 back in about the year 16, or about 16 years into the project. Okay, very good. Thank you. I, I will also just note for clarity on this, because we're talking about a lot of the structure, the deal and everything. The motion that's on the floor is for the approval of the district or the expansion of the district. We're not approving the plan nor a development agreement in association that allows this project to move forward after this deal tonight. M much of what we've talked about with this plan and how the structure of financing will have to come back before this governing body, probably in somewhere in the 30 to 60 day time frame that actually approves a plan and a development agreement that would allow it to go forward. This just modifies the district area to allow it to, for consideration. Commissioner Bynum. Thank you, that was uh, the question that I was gonna ask was the clarification on what specifically we're voting on, which is only the TIF district <coughs> expansion and none of the um, incentives that have been laid out here, nor the 500,000 economic development upfront cash, because I thought I heard Mr. Stevens say that the commission had approved that, and I don't believe that's correct. No, that is correct. It, they have not approved it. It was advanced from standing committee to come forward to start moving through our process, but okay. the governing body has not taken action as a whole to approve this and advance the deal. Thanks. Commissioner Walker. Mr. Maxwell, who who will currently at the beginning of the project own the buildings? Argentine Betterment Corporation. In the event of a default on the part of the tenants, they continue to own this this publicly enhanced money or publicly enhanced property. Correct. Thank you. All right, are there any other questions or comments? I don't see any. I will note again, as Mr. Bach has clarified, the only vote we are taking tonight is on the extension of the district. We are not voting on a development agreement. We're not voting on the final plan. Um, that motion is properly before us. Roll call. Roll call, McKiernan. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Kane. Aye. Markley. Aye. Walters? Aye. Bynum? Aye. Walker? Aye. Townsend? Aye. The vote is 8 to 0. That motion carries. All right, that concludes our public hearing agenda, and it does bring us now to the administrator's agenda. We have uh, two items on that prior to the land bank. Um, the first item is a comprehensive annual financial report. Mr. Bach, would you like to begin with introduction? Certainly. We're. Uh Excited to bring forward our annual CAFR, our Comprehensive Annual Financial Report that I know everyone always looks forward to. It's a very good report coming forward this year. Um, so with that, I want to recognize our Chief Financial Officer is Kathleen, or is Rick McKessick, our Accounting Director, to come forward. Tara with our outside auditing firm, and I'm sorry, Tara, I can't remember your last name at this point, to introduce <laughs> you to come forward. So she's going to present the CAFR, and then staff will do a follow-up on as we move through it. 
Good evening. I'm Tara Laughlin with Alan Gibson Hulick, the external auditors for the Unified Government. We are here tonight to present the um, results of this year's 2016 financial statement audit. Um, and as has been mentioned, this was a very good, very good audit year, and so we're happy to present the results tonight. I'm going to start off with probably the most important item is the actual final audit opinion that we will be issuing on the Unified Government's financial statements. And that is going to be an unmodified opinion, which is really known as a clean opinion, and it is the highest level of opinion that the unified government can achieve on their financial statements. This opinion provides reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatements. Um, so again, it is the highest level of opinion that can be achieved on the financial statements. I'm also going to go into some required communications that we have to present um, as a result of the audit. Inside your packet, if you want to follow along, there should be a letter that has required communications about in the middle of the first page. I'm not going to go through this in detail. Um, a lot of these communications are the same as they have been in previous years, but I'm going to highlight just a few items that came out of this year's audit. Um, I'm first going to touch base on a couple new accounting standards that the unified government was supposed to adopt this year and did adopt. Um, so you will notice a few minor changes within the financial statements as you review them. One of these standards um, increases disclosures regarding the fair value of investments. So you will now not only know what your investment's fair value is, but you'll know how that fair value was determined. So it just pro provides some additional information regarding your investments. The second one um, is um, Statement 77, which is going to add some disclosures in your financial statements regarding certain tax abatement programs that the unified government participates in. Um, so it's going to provide information on not only the program, but the amount of taxes that were abated during the um, reporting period related to those programs. One other area we always like to touch base on is just to note that within the financial statements, there's always going to be some estimates made because not all numbers are known for certain at the end of the year. Um, all of these estimates that are in this year's financial statements are the same that have been in prior year financial statements. As part of our audit process, we review the processes management used to come up with those estimates and also the supporting information used to come up with those estimates. And um, for all the significant estimates that were within the financial statements, our findings were that management used reasonable procedures to come up with those estimates and the information used as a basis for those estimates were reasonable and fairly stated. One other item um, that we need to touch base on is um, audit adjustments that come out of the audit. Um, under any ordinary audit, there's always a handful of adjustments um, that get presented to management to record within the financial statements. This year, there is only five adjustments, and they're all what I would consider normal audit type adjustments that we tend to find throughout any um, financial statement audit that we do. So those were pretty, um, pretty just normal audit adjustments. One thing I want to point out that's actually not in this year's letter and might be one of the most important comments tonight um, is the fact that you will not find any financial reporting and accounting material weakness or significant deficiency in this required communication. Since 2007, we have reported either a material weakness or significant deficiency over the general financial reporting process of the unified government. And over the last 10 years, um, with the help of Rick and his group, they have slowly whittled away at some recommendations that we have had in order to improve the financial reporting process of the unified government. And this year is the year that they finally tackled the last handful of recommendations that we had, and they were able to address all of the significant deficiency issues we had last year, so that has now come off. Um, so although it's not in the report, I did want to highlight it because it's something that's not there, and it's... It's a great item that it is not there. So I do want to acknowledge all the hard work that Rick and his team has gone through the last several years to address that issue. One of the last items I'm going to touch base on before I hand it over to Kathleen and Rick to go over the details of the financial statements is that um, probably one of the most important items is that through our audit and work with Kathleen, Debbie, Rick's group, and all departments within the unified government that we touched during the audit, we had no disagreements. We had no issues, significant difficulties working with management. Everybody at the unified government really helps assist in the audit well, and it was a very clean audit. So I just want to congratulate Kathleen and Rick and their group on a very successful audit this year. And if there's no questions for me, I'm going to turn it over to Kathleen to go into some detail. Good evening. I'm Kathleen Von Atchen, the Chief Financial Officer. And um, I'm very happy to um, 
present to you the financial report for this past year. And um, we're, we're excited to present some of this information for you. First off, we're going to start off with uh, kind of talking about um, the report. The first section is more about the government-wide or entity-wide uh, financial statements. The second uh, item is more near-term position or the traditional fund statements. And then we're going to talk a little bit more in specifics about the audit, the results of the audit. So when we talk about the financial position, uh, these financial statements are basically presented as if we're a private industry or in full, full accrual. It includes both the unified government as well as the uh, Board of Public Utilities. So the, this first slide presents um, the components of our net position and over the last decade. And as you can see, it um, has been around the $800 million mark over the past decade, although there has been some deficit posi uh, positions or in the unrestricted level, as you can see there, um, especially in 2015 and 2016. And that's because uh, we had to implement GASB 68 last year, which required for us to record all of our outstanding pension liability. So the good news, actually, is that um, this is uh, how much in each year, um, how did we improve or deteriorate in each of the years over the past t 10 years. And so you can see that in some of the years, we didn't um, perform very well, but in other years, we performed better. Um, in 2009, there was a significant um, um, loss on the BPU side in their utility operations, which caused that, that decline. Um, and then you can see most recently in 2016, we we're up 5.6% over the prior year. And that's probably because we actually paid off all the star bonds. So, so things are looking pretty good. We're reducing our liabilities. We're continuing to move forward. So at this point now, I'm going to introduce Rick McKasick. And um, I'd also like to um, introduce to you Pam Cahow, who is our management analyst and has, was a great, um, did a, well, contributed a great deal to a, um, you know, preparing this report. So. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, one of the things that I was just going to point out very briefly, we're, we're going to move through these as quickly as we can. If you have a question, don't hesitate to, to ask it as we go through. But uh, these statements here are not entity-wide that we're, the, what we're going to be talking about here are only our governmental funds. So they don't include any of your enterprise funds. They won't include any of the BPU. And, and I just wanted to point that out as we go through this portion. And if you look at the top, you're going to see page references on these slides. Those page references are referencing the pages in the documents, which are the source of the 16 numbers. So as you look at this one, we're talking about the governmental fund balances for the last five years of the general fund, capital projects fund, debt service, economic development, and then the other governmental. And you can see there, it's not that unusual, the trend that we saw on the entity-wide statement, we're seeing some of the same trend here where there were improvements in 15 and 16. This particular uh, uh, chart that we have here, it shows the fund balance as a percentage of the expenditures on an annual basis over the last roughly 10 years. And this is a very important metric that the credit rating agencies will look at. And you can see uh, not so long ago we were really challenged in that area. And, and we've done much better in that area in 15 and 16. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page. The bottom half of that slide shows how we calculate that percentage using the 16 numbers. And you can see the 10% calculated there. Across the top is the reference of what the, the policy is of the UFI government. It is our goal to maintain a minimum fund balance of 10% in the general fund. And that's exactly where we were. I do want to point out that the GFOA best practice is actually 15%. Um, it's a recommendation. Uh, our policy states 10%. 
This particular slide will show the revenues as a percentage of the expenditures. And this is the kind of slide where you want those percentages to be as high as possible. Ideally, you want them to be over 100% where your revenues are covering all of your expenditures. And in our case, we are not doing that. We are using other funding sources to meet those needs. And if you have a question about what those other funding sources could be, page 18 will show exactly what I'm referring to in the bottom. In, in many cases, what we're talking about is, is uh, issuing debt. And that is how we are uh, helping to uh, cover all of our expenditures on these uh, statements. Which leads us right to this graph which shows the percentage of debt that we have according to our legal debt limit. This would be a, a, a slide where you want those percentages to be as low as possible because when, when your debt is low, your debt service is low, it allows you a lot more flexibility with the dollars that you're entrusted to and what, how you handle those when you have a higher debt you've got debt service, you don't have options on what to do with those dollars. And you can see where our trend has gone over the last 10 years in that area. That fortunately is the last slide that we had that had to do with ratios. I know they're a little dry. And so if there's no questions on those, I would like to circle back around to the financial statement audit results. I realize it's a little, uh, hard for all of you to have the complete historical background to understand where we were around 2010 and back in those years where we were really having some challenges because you weren't sitting in your current positions at that time. So historically, I want to give a bit of a picture of what we had gone through. The first is the good news. As we have been before this commission before, you'll know that we annually receive our Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. For 17 consecutive years, we've received that. Um, the 16 CAFR that we are presenting tonight, we have every bit of confidence, we'll make number 18. Um, but what that means is we have put together a report in the proper way and we've done everything that we're required to do. It doesn't really judge what it took to get there, however, which is why I put this slide up here and included it tonight. 2010, there was a fun, th these were the financial statement audit findings that we had in that report. As stated, the findings included three material weaknesses and three significant deficiencies. And I remember early on in one of my conversations with Commissioner McKiernan, he specifically, specifically asked about, if you look at two, three, and four on that list, you will see repeat finding. And he asked me, why are we seeing these year after year? How come they're not going away? And I remember clearly telling him, I don't like them either. I intend to do whatever we can to make sure we get rid of those. So, Step by step, as, as Tara had indicated, we tried to attack those. When it came to bank reconciliations, we went through and made a concerted effort to go through all of the reconciling items that were on the bank reconciliations and try to make sure that they were handled appropriately, timely, and effect effectively. And we went through those over in the property tax collections. Some pro uh, processes were changed, new reviews were put in. And so in 2011, we got those off of the findings. When it came to capital assets, we reached out to departments. We changed our own internal process. We opened up in, uh, communications with, with various uh, different individuals, including engineering. We went and sat and had meetings and went through each and every cap, uh, construction and progress item to discuss where it was and make sure we were handling them right. On the, uh, on the financial side, we also went through working with departments to try to make sure we were getting good, solid information for our schedule of expenditures of federal awards, including reaching out to our internal auditors. 
and in 2012 we got rid of those. We, municipal court decided to upgrade their system for tracking their operations and I spent a lot of time sitting there over a period of months working with municipal court staff going through those items in detail. We opened up a new bank account and we developed a reconciliation process that tied everything out completely. 2013, we got rid of that one. And what Tara sort of alluded to was finding number two has been sitting there since 2007, and we've been chipping at it and chipping at it and working at it. When I first came in five years ago in 2012, one of the first things I wanted to do was eliminate the utilization of uh, an external accounting firm that came in and helped with all of the year-end processes that we weren't doing that had to be done so that AGH could get their, their audit done. We eliminated them and that was $30,000 a year and, uh, that we saved the unified government by, by making that step. Again, reaching out to the departments, we went through and started immediately developing an entire policy and, and, and procedure that and documented it and reached out to our departments, worked with them, tried to inform them about what we needed, tried to work with them to make sure that what we asked of them was not overburdening them because we understand they have jobs and, and one of those isn't necessarily to just make us happy. So we tried to work with the departments as much as we can I reached out to AGH and the audit staff and I opened those lines of communications up, realizing that once a year when they came in was not the time to deal with our issues. When, when things came up that were different, I reached out to them immediately and we got it right the first time so we didn't have to come back later and fix it. One of the things that occurred to us, we have a very small staff of six and in a period of, of uh, four months, I lost two people, and I had decades of unified government knowledge walking out the door in a period of four months with a staff of six people. It was a challenge, but we took that challenge and we turned it into an opportunity, and we brought in two new staff members that were highly qualified, and really, just the day they walked in the door, raised up the, uh, the resources that we had in the office and gave us a lot more possibilities. And then last year, we brought in uh, a, and implemented a uh, CAFR uh, application to help us in the preparation of this. We went through the implementation process in 2015, uh, 2016 on the 2015 CAFR. And this year, we reassumed the responsibility the primary responsibility of being the primary author of this document. 2016, the finding is gone. So, what does that mean? As I stand here tonight, as, as Tara talked, we are presenting the 2016 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report with no financial statement audit findings, and Tara, to correct, it's actually been 2004 since the last time that happened, 2007, was when the first uh, finding that we finally got off was gone, but 2004, so it's been a long time coming and we worked really hard at it and um, I'm very, very pleased to be able to say that tonight because um, it took me about two months when I first, ca first came into the office before I realized that it was going to take me, I, I gave myself a five-year goal. So uh, it's pretty nice to be able to say that to you tonight and be able to report that. But there were a ton of people that helped in this process. This slide is, to me, one of the most important slides that, that we've got in the presentation. I would love to take the time to sit here and discuss with you all the names and the groups that are on that list and tell you specifically the roles each one of those individuals played. You don't want to sit and listen to it though, so I'm going to save you the time and not do that. But I do want to specifically take the opportunity to thank my accounting division staff. They have done nothing but bought into what we were trying to accomplish since the day I walked into that office 
and they've done everything that they are capable of doing to try to give me what I've been asking for them all this time. And there's no doubt in my mind that we don't accomplish what we've accomplished without their efforts. So that being said, I do want to uh, state we've got a long way to go. I've got a lot still that I want to accomplish and uh, we'll get there. So any questions? Commissioner Townsend. Thank you. I didn't have a, uh, a question, but I did want to note that uh, when I first came on the commission and was presented with this comprehensive annual uh, financial report the first time, the first thing that I looked for was what the opinion was from our auditors and was pleased to see, that was back in 13, that it was a, a clean opinion. Um, the second thing was noting some of the uh, things yet to be done, but they were nowhere near in 13, the first time I saw it, as serious as the list that you put on there. So um, the UG has come a long way. So I just did want to really acknowledge what that is as a former uh, accounting major, that what you and the staff has done is really significant. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, that concludes our financial report. Um, thanks to our financial team again. And I'll turn it over to County Administrator on City County Management Day. Something like that. What did year. year. It's a whole year. We're celebrating you the whole year. <laughs> We're looking forward well, we to We are looking for June 18th was the actual day, which is actually not today, Mayor. That's uh, another day which is recognized for several of us who have children. Um, so this coincidentally has fallen on that day because that was the first day in 2017 day. when we started the program. All right, so with the administrator's update, and great job, Rick, and your team, Kathleen, the whole finance group, that was fantastic. Um, moving to that change in the report and not to have any significant findings is a major undertaking and probably could lead off, but I guess that'll be on next quarter's report, you know, to come in and, and note that so we can rehash it then. Um, quite a bit to go through in this report again, but as I've done previously, it's a, uh, been submitted to all of you, so you should have copies of it. If you don't have copies of it, um, we'll make sure you have copies in your office. I'm just going to walk through a few of the highlights uh, tonight. Uh, different categories that we have, these are the same as we've been doing. I'm just going to note different areas as I go through it, and like I said, I'll just point out ones. Not that they're the most significant on, but just some of them that really catch attention as I go through on each page. Um, in the area of police department through public safety, we implemented Project ACT, addressing crime together. Uh, originally, I think it was kind of called the DDAC program, so this is the, the ACT program that we're out there. Um, we're out there with the areas between 7th Street and 18th Street in Grandview and Pacific. This is our data-driven approaches to crime traffic safety, um, and we're looking for big things to come from this as we go through and, and really pull out these specific areas throughout the community and uh, concentrate on them. This is also in done in coordination with what we're doing with our SOAR project work. In the fire department, our land acquisitions are underway for the acquisition of the new fire station in the northwest part of the county. Also, great success with the uh, ground emergency medical transport legislation passed for us. This is a significant achievement for us. We're going to see uh, probably in excess of $2 million annually back to the unified government. It'll take a couple of years before we start to see the actual dollars from this program. Uh, but due to the wisdom of the legislature, as they pass this information forward, we're going to see great changes from that. But it'll probably be about 2019 or 20 before we actually start seeing the, the collections of the dollars from this program as we go from here. And just a side note on that, I believe this item successfully went past the time frame. I believe the governor signed it today or this was the last day it went forward. So it is official now. On the sheriff's office, uh, we started the video internet visitations and in operation, um, which also generates some revenue. So it's easier to work with for people coming to make those visitations, but we're also making about $7,000 a month from this. Municipal court, 
Uh, Forty-six percent of all charges filed this quarter have been resolved and closed, which is up six percent over the previous year. In emergency management, we've done the replacement of outdoor warning system encoders have been ordered. So they, that's, uh, as you know, we had that incident in the metro earlier where they tapped into some of the outdoor warning sirens, hacked into it, and caused them to go off. So through that point, many of the different systems in the area have come through and put up some different encoders so that's the direction we're going with this infrastructure um, several lists and many of these things would probably be good to go through and look at i've just noted that we submitted the final plans for the first phase on leavenworth road to kdot for october 2017 bid letting and the construction will begin in 2018 if you go by there you can see that there is utility relocation work starting now also, the Riverview Avenue Bridge replacement project is on track to be completed um, before August 18th. And traffic signal at the intersection of Turner Diagonal and Riverview is operational with allowing some access back into the Amazon and Bethel Church to the west. Parking lot D, over, which is the one that sets to the west of the courthouse attached to that, the security access project plan has been finalized and we are proceeding to bid for that project to begin. Um, we've also had the proposed move in for the new South Patrol Police Station for July 12th. Um, we're looking at a ribbon cutting cer ceremony on July 10th. Under Parks and Recreation, I'll note that Alvey and Max Park both received new ADA accessible playground equipment. Also, we've restructured the whole mowing property maintenance program again one of our SOAR initiatives um, and we've really put the focus under the whole mowing program under the parks area so they're, they they kind of coordinate what they do there with mowing that we take place in other parts of our government right away such like that um, initial initial results are showing a great improvement to the time required to address mowing parks land bank lots and our medians I'll just note the cycle time that we had Previous year, last year for parks was at 18 days, and we've reduced that to eight days this year, which has made a significant difference. And I think as you drive by and see them, you can tell that. Under the area of customer service, our tuber tuberculous control materials were translated to Burmese, Nepali, and Swahili to help better serve the immigrant clients in the health department. <coughs> Fiber network design has been finalized for the police department body, body camera program. So that's really innovation, but clearly in the public safety realm as well. Also an in innovation, we have geospatial services has developed a new zoning data layer for the city of Edwardsville. And that's now available on our UG maps and our dot maps programs. Under economic development, community planning and housing, um, I'll note we've looked and this had been talked about somewhat again with the SOAR program of hiring the new zoning enforcement officer. So that person is on board and being trained and taking action. Also our hotel convention center, notice of need proposals were received. Those are currently under evaluation and with some discussion going on with the uh, proposers for that. Um, Land Bank has placed 50 homes in the newly formed rehab program. So this is one that we're getting started with. We have currently have 15 contractors that are working with this in program to bid for these. And six of those homes that we have acquired are under contract for rehab. So we have thousands of homes to work into this program. This is our start into it. And um, we're feeling a lot of success as we move forward. And obviously our objective is never to own too many at any given time. But that's the start we have to have. We'll also note that those homes that we've taken into our ownership, we take under a special care. So we start going in immediately, putting in a mowing program for that, recognizing the fact that they're in a neighborhood, they should be mowed like a house that's in a neighborhood. We board them up so they're secure if that's the right step to make. Or we start to put tarp on the roof so they're secure until we can get those turned into a, a, contractor's, a contractor or a, a eventual homeowner that wants to buy them. Under education and workforce development, um, human resources attended many different career and job fairs, um, all listed up here. 
in association with various schools around the community. Uh, we administer, administered written monthly examinations and physical agility testing. Uh, police Department 74 written, and you see there, Sheriff's Department had 30 and Fire Department 90 different written, and then they correspond out to agility test after those who move forward in the program. Under transportation, we implemented free fares for veterans in coordination with the uh, Transit Association with the metro area on the fixed route transit system. <laughs> Social services, we have a newly combined advisory commission on human relations, disability issues, which you all had worked on for some time. So this is that new joint committee and they held their first meeting and are in the process of receiving ethics training. Under Area Agency on Aging, the 124 seniors received, served, or were served through the Senior Care Act, and this is really a result of the additional money that this governing body put forward into this program for 2017 after we received drastic state reduction that would have impacted most of these seniors and they would not have received these services. Under the Health Department, the WIC staff is meeting with Univision, the Spanish television station, to discuss promote, pr promotions for the WIC and healthy foods to the Hispanic population. Um, WIC was also featured in the May 12th interview. KCK School District and the Health Department launched a healthy food truck designed to make nutritious meals more accessible to children in Wyandotte County. Um, and listed up here many of the stops that they had in areas in the community. <coughs> Under Public Works, we increased the number of schools that were currently served by the uh, walking school bus program to 14. Um, this has been a very successful program for our community and, and, with, and done in coordination with our local schools. Parks and Recreation, this is just a list of some of the events. It's not all of the events, just some notable ones I've put up into the report. Uh, under the environment, we partnered with BPU and EPA on electronics recycling with 126 vehicles and 12.9 tons collected um, for our recycling event. NRC, we expedited the weed and trash process. This is one of, another one of our SOAR project initiatives that the commission has been pushing on where we had, if you look at this in 19, or 2016, well, I jumped back 20 years, um, 377 programs were in the 14-day abatements were created. This year, during that same time period, we had over 1,000 created. So we feel like there's a lot of success in moving forward in our ability to address these issues. Building inspection, 474 permits were issued uh, through May, which is up 114 over that same time period in 2016. Probably more notable to that, the valuation for that is close to 40, is up almost $48 million. Uh, several personnel were brought on board during this time period, a new county engineer, our deputy director of buildings and logistics, our Interim Economic Development Director, who had several presentations this evening, as well as the appointment of our county appraiser to a new four-year term. In finance, we completed four long-term financings in February of 2017, uh, the Municipal Temp Note Series, GO Improvement Series 2017A, Taxable GO Improvement Bond Series, and the GO Refunding Bond Series. Uh, we see these as they come forward and get approved on, but there's a lot of action, a lot of activity that takes place in the finance department by several staff period people as they move forward to make these happen each year. Completed the comprehensive fee schedule, which was presented to the uh, Economic Development and Finance Standing Committee, so it was really our first opportunity to get this for you so you had the comprehensive look of what we have as we proceed forward um, in the coming year to start addressing and looking at the review of each of those fees and then come back with recommendations as we proceed forward. Uh, accounting completed the uh, 2016 year-end process in conjunction with the financial audit. Um, in the clerk's office, they went live with the next request system on March 1st, 2017. 
To date, we've had 309 open records requests have been submitted through this portal. Um, the average completion day for those is 7.3. One notable thing about the next request, if you're not familiar with it, is once we have fulfilled the request, that puts that information out there and available for someone else to come in. If they're looking for the same question six months from now, that information is now available already on next request. So one, it makes it much more convenient and available for the public to get information when they're looking for it, if they've asked a question that's already been asked. And then it also cuts down on staff time so we don't have to go back and fulfill a request a second time. So just another way of making ourselves uh, probably should have this under customer service, so I'll probably ought to put that under that category since that's sort forward. Our spring tax sale was very successful. We collected over 3.3 million. Um, over 700 parcels were filed, which was a record high number for us. Over 400 bidders came in and register, registered for that process. Um, total redemptions. And total property sale really lowered that 700 number down to, I believe, only less than 20 houses were left that were not sold at the end of that process. Appraiser's Office, 2016 payment under protest. First half appeals were completed in January and February. Staff communication, this is just a listing of the different types of meetings that I have. Keep that in coordination with you between our weekly meetings. Um, senior managers meetings that I do and uh, one-on-ones with staff. Public and citizens, we published a citizen newsletter focusing on our SOAR initiative to really get the word out of the direction of what we're doing. This summer newsletter is in production, uh, be anticipated to be released in late July. And this is the communication we've had with the commissioners over that same time period, which is the same formats we've used between the weekly notes that I put out, um, a few on threes where we talk about different things where we're doing, such as on pursuit, uh, star bonds, such like that, and then other information like from the appraiser. And that concludes my summary of my report. If there's any questions you have, I'll be happy to answer them, or after you've had the time to look through more detail of it, if you have more questions. I'll be happy to answer those or any of my assistants. All right. Um, thank you very much. Just as a reminder, um, we do an annual evaluation of our administrator, and there was discussion three years ago that maybe we need to hear more than once a year, and these quarterly reports are very helpful. There's a ton going on in the community, um, and it's helpful not only for the commission to be up to date on things that are happening, but it also puts this report out publicly so the public can see all the initiatives that are being taken and anyone who's interested can, go, can scroll through them by department to see the great things that are happening at the Unified Government. So Mr. Bach, thank you for your work and for your team's work. Um, it's outstanding. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the Commissioner's agenda item, the blue sheet item. This is a resolution regarding the Unified Government's support of a clean energy economy and healthy planet created by increasing investments in renewable energy and energy efficiency and by building and strengthening relationships around the world to protect the planet from hazards created by climate change. Um, I, will, I will turn this over um, to Mr. Commissioner Walker, who um, had requested for this to come forward. Mr. Walker, would you like to make any statement on this? I, uh... And if you were to make a statement, could you kindly use your microphone? I approached the mayor uh, a week ago uh, voicing my belief that along with many other cities, many very large cities, states, that perhaps we should uh, reaffirm our commitment to the overall purpose of the Paris Accords. I Obviously, I do not find the stated reasons for withdrawal by our president to be um, sound. Um, I don't believe that this obligates us to do anything but to use our best efforts to use clean uh, energy, clean chemicals, clean. Uh, and even if you don't believe in climate change, what's wrong with not polluting the environment? I mean, I just don't get it. Um, I know Mr. Trump thinks that this is going to put a lot of coal workers back to work. 
and I'm going to make a political statement. Uh, politics didn't put coal out of business. Gas put coal out of business. And if you've read anything about it, you know that's true. And as long as gas is cheap, coal mines are not going to open up. So this is more symbolic than substantive, but it puts us on record as being opposed to the withdrawal, and it also reaffirms our commitment to a clean environment. All right, I'll accept that as a motion for approval as well. Second. And it has been seconded. Um, this would um, have the unified government join 290 other local governments um, with a similar statement that has been circulated um, through both the National League of Cities and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. I see no further discussion. Roll call. Roll call. McKiernan? Aye. Mugia? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Kane? Aye. Markley? Aye. Walters? Aye. Bynum? Aye. Walker? Aye. Townsend? Aye. The vote is 9-0. to zero. That motion carries. I'd like the record to show my agreement as an aye as well. All right. We are now adjourned as the Unified Government Board of um, Commissioners, and we are now reconvened as the Land Bank Board of Trustees. All items before us are on consent. Second. Anyone who would like to remove an item from consent is invited to come forward to the microphone at this time. Any item not so removed will be voted on with a single vote. Second. Let the record show no one is moving forward to remove an item. I do have a request for comment. Is this before? Before, please. Before Commissioner Bynum. I would like to uh, recognize Chris Slaughter. Um, I want to make it known that I requested that Mr. Slaughter be for one time moved to the front of the agenda. Uh, I was denied that. Thank you for staying. Um, with respect to one of the properties on the list, 2745 North 91st Street. Okay, we're going to have to pull it off of consent if we're going to consider it. Pull it off. I just want him to um, tell us about it because it's a property that I worked on for demolition. All right, Commissioner, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to overrule. You're going to have to pull, have it, to pull off. it off. Yep. I like to pull it off. Okay, which one is it? 2745? 45. It is removed. North 91st Street. Thank you. It will be considered Commissioner Mergia. I don't want to I wasn't done. Okay, keep going, I Commissioner Mergia. Sorry, Commissioner. Comment was all I was doing. Um that's a property that I worked on with a constituent. Okay, Commissioner, I can give you your full time of speech as soon as we vote on the rest of them. Oh, okay. All right, Commissioner McGee. Um, Then I think I'll wait too. I just have a, I have a question for Chris about the transfers to the land bank. Did I ask that now or later? Um, you can ask that question generally now if it's about just transfers generally. It's just transfers generally. Okay. So the transfers to the land bank, Chris, are... Um, all from Heartland Habitat for Humanity. Um, I'm just curious what, what that is, why that's happening. Okay, Commissioner, then I'm going to issue the same thing. We'll need to remove all of those items from the consent agenda. Okay. The habitat items, we'll remove those transfers and consider the others afterwards. No problem. Okay. All right, the remaining items are properly before us. Roll call. Roll call McKiernan. Aye. Mugia. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Kane. Aye. Markley. Walters? Aye. Bynum? Aye. Walker? Aye. Townsend? Aye. The motion is 9 to 0. It, um, the vote is 9 to 0. That motion carries. That brings us to 2745 North 91st Street. Thank Commissioner, you. would you like to make your statement? Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to acknowledge uh, Chris and the staff and also staff at the NRC. 2745 North 91st is a, a property that I had worked on with a a taxpayer and who happens to be present tonight. Um, it was um, blighted, needed to be demolished, and that action has occurred. Uh, this property has now found its way into the 